Hi, Pamela. Can you hear me? I can now. I can't see anybody else, though. Well, oh, there's only um, Roz and me and Landon and you. Yeah, but at least I usually can see. Maybe it's my gallery, my view options. Hold on. I can only see. Well, I'm sharing my screen. Right, I know, but shouldn't I see you on the side too? Usually, here, over here, gallery. There we go. Now I have, okay. So you can hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Go. Yeah. I know you can't change your last name to Lionheart. Heart. So I Good morning, Arnold. Good morning, Pamela. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good.
Good morning. Good morning. And how is everyone today? I'm fine on this end. How are you doing? Okay. Hi, Pamela. Really, I miss you. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Arnold. And Ross is probably there somewhere. Somewhere. She's upstairs right now. <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to Chris and then get my own going. See you in a couple seconds. All right. Okay. Lisa? Lisa Berg? I didn't put us on the picture. We don't need to be on the picture. There's Bruce. Bruce Brandenburg's right there. That's what? Bruce Brandenburg is right there. I we've not seen him before. Yeah. He's got his iPad and Becky's got hers. There's Bruce. Yeah, yeah. There's a thing. Well, I know it's Bruce. when I even put my arm down. Ooh. When I that place is really vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. Completely empty. Yeah, nobody can go. Looks like there's somebody sitting there been one or two. somebody sitting way over here, it looks like. Maybe. Oh, we're in. They haven't started yet. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's right. See, I, I, I can't see everything. But if I turn this way and put my back to you, then I can see the board and see you from here. So I see you. I'm waving. You see my back. But I see your faces. Oh, uh, welcome. I'm uh, thrilled that we're that you're all here for this uh, celebration of our August 23rd liturgy. Uh, in the time of COVID, I'm sure that we have our BC and our CE, and now we have a whole new, I don't know, after COVID, AC or something. That's but unique. we're we're in COVID history. Uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, 
Berg will be our preacher today, and uh, he's going to tell you all about one of the great joys of teaching uh, theology in uh, schools of religion, as it inspired him. So there, I've piqued your curiosity. Uh, I also... Uh, like to uh, welcome Lily Bell Zartorsky today. She is uh, going to be singing with us and, uh, and also singing an anthem for us as we set the table today. So Lily Bell, welcome back. We're always happy to have you home. Uh, and, uh, and then also just to let you know, in the summer Saints Alive magazine, we really profiled a lot of the physical repairs that there are just simply urgent requirements and needs to tend to. And while we have to delay maybe on the full formal capital campaign, uh, your vestry received recommendations from the Administration and Finance Committee leadership at their meeting Tuesday night and uh, they concluded that, uh, it, that they uh, appreciated the suggestion, the way forward that finance administration offered, uh, looking for ways to preserve our principal and still allow us to attend to some repairs. So they have called a special meeting of the church next Sunday after church at 12.30. So we would like it been in the, uh, the daily bulletin and reminder, and it will be there every day through next week. Uh, but we would invite you to make it a priority, if you can, to join that conversation. There is a letter that's been mailed to each of your homes. It's the very same letter that you will find posted in the daily bread and the daily re weekly reminder. So we hope that you'll be able to come and uh, lend your voice to that. It is the congregational vestry leadership's hope that you will uh, share with them their uh, appreciation that we have a way forward and to begin that so that we can begin to make plans to tend to some uh, very urgent needs that are based on water mitigation concerns and safety here at the church. So. I uh, present that to you also. As we prepare ourselves for liturgy today, I would like to invite you to uh, just use the prelude time as an opportunity to center, prepare yourselves, and then we will begin with our opening hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, for the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as you hear the readings of Scripture read by Pamela Todorov today. A reading from the book of Exodus. Listen now for the word of God. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, They set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth even before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and bitch and put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at that river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 124. If God had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If God had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up, up alive in their fierce anger toward us? Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us? Then would the raging waters have gone right over us? Blessed be God, who has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of God, the maker of heaven and earth. Second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, just a few words about this gospel today. Um, I know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, I am also uneasy about being boxed into a corner which forces me to say it. It's very easy to turn today's gospel into a kind of faith test. It feels more like a trap than an opportunity to illuminate or enlighten. My students once did that to me. They insisted that I define God for them. I refused, arguing that what was more important was for them to come up with their own definition rather than for me to hand them one. They were relentless. And so I thought I'd give it a try. My effort was roundly denounced as too dry and academic, emotionally unengaging, and inadequate because it lacked biblical justification. They were absolutely merciless. My response suggested more about me than it did about God. In some ways, it is exactly the same spot that Peter and the other disciples were in in today's gospel. Who do all those coming out to see me, who do they think I am, Jesus asked. What's the consensus opinion? He gets responses as varied as the crowd itself. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Though he is an exalted company, Jesus is still not reassured. For he asks the question again, but more pointedly this time. No, no, he chides. Who do you, you all, those who have been with me, the ones I chose, the ones who should know me best, who do you say that I am? He gets a more acceptable answer this time, but only one, one response representing them all. Simon Barjona steps forward and, if, and as if speaking for the whole group, he says, you are the anointed one, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And finally, and at last, we have a moment of lucidity, simple clarity, and it was provided by Simon, of all people. Simon about to be renamed Peter. Peter the impulsive, good old shoot from the hip Peter. Simon Barjona is now officially Petros, the rock, the foundation. 
Some actually want to refocus Peter's contribution to this conversation by arguing that Jesus refers to building his church on the rock, but he means the confession itself, not the person who utters it. But in all honesty, it makes not a lot of difference because this moment of clarity is short-lived. In just six verses, Peter the Rock reveals how little he understands what Messiah means. He got the title right, but he hadn't a clue about what it meant. Who do you who have been closest to me, who do you say that I am? There is a profusion of questions buried in that question about Jesus' identity. They are one source of my uneasiness about this gospel. For who do you say that I am? It's really a question about the one asking it as much as it is about the one answering it. Jesus is asking, what is most important to you? What do you stand for? What or who do you hang your life on? What will drive you out of your complacency to act out and stand up? Who do these people who make this enormous claim about Jesus, who do they think they are? Who do we think we are? Uncomfortable questions. If one takes on the question and answer, he or she ought to also develop a strategy to diffuse the inevitable argument that's going to follow just like Karl Barth did. One of the great theologians of the 20th century, Karl Barth, profound and complex and Germanic, although he was Swiss by nationality, he's one of those figures that everybody admires but few people read. He is very difficult. It is reported that he was once cornered by sincere questioners who wanted to know just what he believed. And don't tell us, they said, don't tell us with highfalutin words and long sentences. Be concise and use language that we can understand. Well, Bart wanted his work to be understood, and so he took on the challenge. Reporters gathered round him, pencils hovering over blank pages. They knew his response was going to be profound, and they needed to record it. It is reported that he cleared his throat as if in preparation for uh, a lengthy declamation and in his heavy accent, he began to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, yet he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. He wasn't joking. Subsequent explanation of that little hymn would reveal how deep and searching was his analysis. But for now, it was charming and disarming. There is, in fact, much about which to argue in this seemingly harmless little hymn. For example, I would hope that little ones would know that they are loved, even if it were not in the Bible. Nevertheless, one admires the clever innocence of Bart's response. It got him off the hook. It was safe. And right now, in this cultural climate, there is a priority on safety. 
That's the rule that Peter's confession broke. It was anything but safe. It was risky. One declares what he or she believes. One is confronted then by the next question. How much are you committed to this belief? What will you sacrifice or what will you take on for it? What will you risk? Expressed as a popular children's hymn, it's sweet and innocent. In its cloying way, it does not invite further inquiry. A clever response wrapped in innocence and sung with utter sincerity. Who is going to criticize the children's choir? The problem is that the question is wrongly put in the first place. The question leads us in the wrong direction. The answer to the question promises certainty, for it responds with an objective, tangible thing. But let me offer you a different explanation that sees God and self in more fluid and dynamic ways. It's based on the notion that the self is not a thing, or if it is a thing, it is malleable, changeable, subtle, and maybe even self-correcting, or at least possibly so. I think of Jeremiah's metaphor of God as potter and we as clay. When you think about yourself, say 10 years ago, just a little thought experiment, think about yourself 10 years ago. Were you the same person as you are now? What has happened to you in the meantime? Could you ever have imagined that you would be spending a sunny summer morning virtually attending church, listening to an old man talk about the meaning of self, or of living through a pandemic, the worst in a century, or discovering that racism is as virulent as it ever was? What we are living through, what is changing us now, was inconceivable not that long ago. And it leads me to the conclusion that who we really are is more a concept than a thing. And it is as real and as powerful as anything. It is the idea of who we are and who we strive to be. And it allows for saving changes, adaptations and adjustments. All of this adapting is based on certain qualities that are foundational. When we talk about who we are, I vote if I had a vote for something that includes imagination and possibility and surprise and potential and choice. Given our current woes, the allure of certainty is unquestionable. We are living with enough risk as it is. We also have to acknowledge that our understanding of Jesus is constantly evolving too, or at least I hope it is. Messiah, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Messiah, Peter's breakthrough identification of Jesus simply means anointed. It means set aside for some special purpose. In Israel, three categories of people were anointed, prophets, priests, and kings. In other words, what Peter meant by Messiah has a fair amount of wiggle room in it. What did he actually mean? Most scholars think that he was likening Jesus to the line of Israel warriors king like David. Jesus seems to cotton to that idea, kind of approving of it, but only in the short run. It is as if he is saying, Peter, you're getting warmer. When Messiah and Jesus, what Messiah and Jesus mean is filled in and given color on the canvas of history. Peter and we ourselves will come to know its meaning 
as we continue to explore its significance for us now. And in that, I find myself oddly certain of one thing about who Jesus was and is and who I am trying to be. And it is based on the mystery of the good. Even in the midst of terrible tragedies, good things still happen. It's a way of acknowledging that God doesn't quit. God continues to work amid economic collapse and a pandemic that does not yield. God is still working in laboratory seeking a vaccine, in offices and healthcare centers which provide essential services. God is still working in the kindnesses and regard one shows for others. God is still working in incalculable acts of generosity and sharing, God is still working and providing. Our task is to be nimble observers and thinkers, to see God's hand at work in the world about us. In this time of distress, hope is what draws us into the future. And it can seem a very fragile thing. Indeed, false hope Hope with no basis in experience can be cruel, but there is nothing false about the goodness that we encounter every day and the hope that arises from it. That hope is steady and enduring, and it confirms that God is still active in the world to redeem and make whole all of God's good creation. you to join me now as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, one in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that, that is seen and unseen. unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the, only the only Son of God, of God eternally begotten of the Father, Father God, God from God, light, light from light, light true God, God from true God, he got not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, he was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant to Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and truth that we may honor one another and serve the common good.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those who have entrusted their needs to our intercession on their behalf. Alana. Alan and Sharon. Anna Mary. Barbara. Bonnie and Rod. Brent. Carolyn. Carol. Catherine. Chris and Lisa. Christine J. Cindy and John. Debbie. Diane. Eleanor. Elaine. Gordy. Greg. Heidi and Mark. Holly. Hugh. Irma and Susie. James. Jerry. Julie. June. Karen. Kelly. Ken. Lahuana. Lois. Marcia. Meg. Nicole and Steve. Pat. Olga. Ron. Ross. Sean. Sheldon. Sue. Sydney. Taylor. The Reverend Twyla. Wolfgang. Yuri and Tatiana. We pray for all those who have died and all the victims of coronavirus and other disease and illness. Almighty God, we entrust all people to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We also today want to celebrate those who are observing the anniversary of a birth, today or in the coming week. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on all who celebrate the beginning of another year, especially Shirley Nebel. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray as well for those observing an anniversary today or in the coming week. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon all couples celebrating anniversaries this week and grant them your grace that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Living God, may they not fail you. Nor we fail them. O Christ, the master carpenter, who at the last, through wood and nails, purchased our whole salvation, Wield well your tools in the workshop of your world, so that we who come rough-hewn to your bench may here be fashioned to a truer beauty of your hand. We ask it for your own name's sake. 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, pausing first, uh, and don't be intimidated by the lengthening silence. Pausing first in silence to uh, examine our own lives. And saying together, most merciful God, oh God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, in him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our sac Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people. Let us give thanks for these and all God's many mercies by saying together the prayer of thanksgiving after communion. In gratitude. In deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect more from us, encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. Go now to follow the way of Jesus. See others as he did, dare to give freely as he did, and to love unconditionally as he did. Go, embraced by the source of life, love, and hope, in the company of the word of life, encouraged by the breath of life. Amen. Amen.
together met, together bowed, we'll go our different ways, so as his people in the world will live and speak his praise. Oh God, let our mouths proclaim your praise. And your glory all the day long. Hello. Hello. And how is everyone today? BT Keen. BT Keen. I haven't heard that expression in a long time. God, I, I use that all the time. I can't believe someone else. <laughs> yeah, but you're old. <laughs> It ages us ahead. Be careful. Yeah, you're old. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you, Sharon. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Yeah. You look mm -hmm. great. Well, I know. Feels great. Gross fat, doesn't it? <laughs> Looks good, uh, though. Yeah. It's interesting. I bet. <laughs> Quite a change, right? Yeah. Yeah, no one's got ponytails anymore. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm wait 50s. a minute. <laughs> I've still got my ponytail going I here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, oh goodness. girls. How are you guys? Hi, Diane. Hi. How are Hi, you? Hi, Diane. We're doing doing great. great. Good. Doing well. Mm -hmm. So good to see faces. It is. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish Justin. more people would join us. Right. Mm -hmm. How's Justin, Bonnie? Oh, he's great. He's, um, he's really good. He's loving the warm weather and <laughs> he exercises just, he's like a maniac. He exercises <laughs> every day and rides a stationary bike for an hour every day. And oh my gosh. And, great. Wow. That's yeah. wonderful. Oh, he, good. Well, tell him hi. Oh, I will. Him. Yeah. I'm, we were thinking of trying to, he get, just gets up at nine and by the time he's eating breakfast and stuff, yeah. he can't join us, but we might wake him up a little earlier next week and not tell him ahead of time. So he has to. <laughs> 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 it's a great set I mean, yeah. clock. We'll change his clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing yeah. great though. Thanks for asking. Oh um, yeah. That's wonderful. Glad to hear it. Just miss yep. seeing him. 
Yeah. Yeah, sure. we'll, have, we'll try to get him on. Yeah, we'll put summer. him on, or else we can hold up some pictures. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that always works, you know. It works. Another version of phoning it in, right? There yeah, you go. So right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, How's the weather out there, Lisa? Is it hot? I am going to have to hydrate. I am telling you what, I am one giant puddle right now. Yes, it's hot out here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you up in the yeah. What? Where are you? I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting on my back deck with the dogs so that if they go haywire, they're not going haywire in the house with Chris with an open mic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think about that when I was reading the lessons. My dog was chewing on his bone. I hope you guys didn't hear the crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, never heard oh, thing. Yeah, we heard it. I, I heard it. <laughs> of course, now he's quiet and sleeping. But then I myself, yeah. oh my God, what am I going to do? I didn't even think about him. <laughs> so. No, he was fine. Yeah, didn't hear it. But, well, but George is always welcome anyway. You know that, Pamela. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the crunching of a bone didn't quite fit with the story of Moses in the bot basket. I mean, it, it wasn't. We should have had the dry bones more. story. What? Yeah. Dry bones. The dry story. bones. The dry <laughs> bones story. Yeah. I, I love that one. That's a great one. But you're right. Yeah. If we ever. Karen and Alan, how how's Alana doing? She's doing well. She Good. Um, had a follow-up doctor's appointment. Got names that I could see, but I didn't get to go and, in. Because and and see how many it went followed. very well, and her uh, white blood oh, cells have up some. So while her immunity is still coming back, mm -hmm. um, Good. it's it's coming. It's it's making it, and making she got progress. a offer, and her. Doctor said it's with the same people she worked for before. Oh, and in fact, she'll be working as an assistant um, for Natasha Leone, the one she worked for before, who's who did Russian Doll. But she's directing um, Sarah Colson, I guess it is, who does the. I haven't seen it yet. The lip sync of President Trump. Oh no, oh, I haven't no, seen. I haven't seen that. Anyway, it's it's some humor. Sure, whatever. So he said she could go back to work as long as. Yay! She oh, that's wonderful news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's really great. I bet Give she's glad best. too. She is. She mm -hmm. is. She's yeah. she's a little tentative because she knows her immune system isn't quite all the way back. Sure. Yeah, that's totally understandable. So yeah. Mask she, and field and good. Okay, and just wash his hands a lot. In the Los Angeles area. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Yes. So she has to be extra careful too because of Corona, I guess. Yeah, there's yeah. more. There's more there out there. Yeah. 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 Just to reassure you, I am not going back to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll you need a new that. career, Alan, with your hair like that. You need a new yeah. career. Yeah. I've been thinking about impersonating George Washington. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be a hell of a lot better than Trump. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, bye everybody. Yeah, I gotta go grocery shopping and I hate it. Oh. Yeah. oh. I'm going in where there's air conditioning. <laughs> yes, you go cool off, young lady. Oh, hi, great, Lisa. Right. Yes, I will. Love everybody. Have a great week, Love you me. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye, awesome. everybody. Bye. bye. Gotta find yeah. out. God bless. See you God next bless week. You See you next Turn week. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Everybody. bye. See you, Jack. Go on. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Go. It looks like you're one of the, the last hanging in there, Jack and Gail. Bye. And Bruce and Becky. Meg and Ellis, thank you all. Blessings to you all. Thank you.